This is Samari and Pina. At 14 years old, Samari was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced 92 years to life in prison. About 16 years ago, I was living a gang of lifestyle criminality, committed gang related crimes, shootings, and robberies that led to my incarceration. But while in prison, something changed. I had an epiphany and I broke that mentality and I just dived into self work and developing a plan. Today, just out of prison, he's putting this plan into action by coming to the show with his wife as their financial situation is in trouble. So this money here, guys, is the amount of money that today, if you do not act on your debt, you will have to spend purely in interest per year. Not only that, but they're about to go through one of the biggest events of their lifetime. We're expecting our first child. In this video, we'll dive into their story and answer the question everyone wants to know. Can life give you a second chance? Welcome to Finance Action, the show where we take action. My name is Roman, and today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Samari and Pina. How are you guys doing? I'm fine. Good, thank you. Awesome, guys. Let's look at your profile. Let's start with Samari. Samari, you are 30 years old. You're originally from Los Angeles, and you currently live in Los Angeles, and you work as a behavioral interventionist, but also as a model. Is that right? Yes, it is. All right. Pina, let's move uh, to you. You are 36 years old. You're originally from Utah, and you can live as well as Los Angeles, and you work as a full-time massage therapist. Is this correct? Yes. Awesome. Guys, today we'll be looking at this lovely couple as one entity. They have been together now for... Six, Six years. years. And you've been married for? Two. Two. All right. As you will see, this is probably one of the most interesting story uh, that we've seen so far on this show. So tight the belt as this is going to be a very, very interesting ride. Okay. Looking at the way you guys rated your personal finances, and there is a little bit of, not tension, but uh, you guys don't fully agree on it. Summary from cheating to melee, you rated the couple as I'm okay. Yes. But uh, Pina, you rated you guys at surviving. <laughs> All right. Can you tell me a little bit more about What's going on? Maybe starting with you, Summary. Just coming home from being uh, formerly incarcerated for, for 16 years. And uh, so I'm here living this new experience. So that's why I say we're okay, because I always believe that we can be doing worse. Okay, that's fair. So you've been incarcerated for some time, literally recently come out of prison. Uh, we've been diving into some of the stories around that very shortly. But now I give you uh, the mic, Pina. Why would you rate yourself as, or the couple as, surviving? Mostly because we're expecting our first child. So um, if we weren't, I would say, okay. Um, but I'm the warrior of the relationship, so... That's why I feel like surviving would suit us best. Okay. Ex in fact, uh, yes, this lovely couple is now expecting a child in uh, how long? Uh, six months. In six, six months. months. Yeah. Okay. So uh, October due date. October due date. Okay. So we'll see how uh, we'll set you up uh, great for this, you know, probably best, uh, one of the best experience of your lifetime. Um, but let's make sure that the finance background, uh, the finance structure or foundation is solid around it. Yes. All right, Samori, I want to push a little bit more the story around your background. So you mentioned that you've been incarcerated for 16 years, recently came out. Kind of walk me through what brought you to be in this position in the first place and how have you evolved since then? About 16 years ago, I was 14 years old, gang, uh, living a gang lifestyle criminal, criminality, and I eventually... Uh, committed gang-related crimes, uh, gang-related shootings and robberies that led to my incarceration. From there, I end up being so young, believing that the lifestyle I was living was a righteous lifestyle. I continued to promote that while inc incarcerated. Luckily, I was blessed to run across some older individuals who uh, helped me break that. And I had an epiphany and I broke that mentality. And from there, I just dived into uh, self-work, breaking that mentality and developing a plan to just be better than once I, where I was. And uh, eventually I am coming home and I was able to help out youth, youth work, advocate work. And that's how I got into a behavior interventionist, working with children with autism, because that's one of my passions in life. 
I mean, it's, it is inspiring, you know, um, to see that you have allowed yourself a second chance. Uh, the fact that, you know, you went into prison at such a young age um, and, and you probably pretty much grew up in Imprint. the prison yeah. um, environment. And uh, today, uh, I definitely feel a, a positive energy coming from you, uh, Samari. I want to dive actually uh, briefly into some of the uh, steps that you've taken in prison that have allowed you to present yourself as the person that you are today. What allowed me to change is first uh, self-education, uh, surrounding myself with people of the same mindset, to help guide me and help on this path of self-enlightenment, reading uh, multi multitudes of books, philosophy books that allowed me to uh, generate questions. And then those questions I end up finding answers to that allowed me to be a better person. And then I began to take self-help classes. And then from there, I took it a step further and I began to teach them classes. And then from there, I just continued on that path youth advocacy, youth outreach, and to help others break uh, addictions, breaking out from the criminal lifestyle, and just being a, a guiding force for others as somebody was for me. Amazing. And now you've been out of the prison system for how long? Uh, November 28th last year, so it's, what, five months now? Five months? Okay. How has been your experience with complete freedom after spending most of your life, the majority of your life, incarcerated? For the most part, I point my period, it's been awesome. <laughs> obviously, obviously, it's a, been way, it's, obviously I love being home. Um, the transition for myself, and like I tell a lot of people, is that I kind of feel like I woke up from a dream because I was basically like living a nightmare and then I came home to just boom, I come home and now I'm just back into the groove of things. But the only difference was that I'm coming home as a man now. I went in as a child and I'm coming home as a man. So now I'm faced with the responsibilities of adulthood, being a husband, so on and so forth. Now a, a father too. So uh, those uh, that was a, a big difference, but I planned and before I came home, I planned as best as I can. And I'm, I've just been out here executing my plan. So I'm sure there's been a lot of thoughts as to how you would want to approach every other steps that you've taken. Yeah. And I must say, uh, so far coming from Samari's position, um, I'm seeing some, some really, um, you know, really good actions. So I'm glad to see that your plan is starting to pan out. It's not the most optimal, but, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, who is always perfect. Uh -huh. um, but definitely steps that you've taken um, that have secured you a job that we'll be speaking about very shortly. I want to briefly um, bring a little bit more knowledge, if you don't mind, around the component around money in prison. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for people incarcerated to generate some form of income? Yes, there is. So there's basically three ways to or generate money in prison. And one is by family and friends support by them sending you money, allowing you to go to, uh, to the store and buy food and stuff like that, and packages. And then another one is uh, getting a job in there some of the jobs pay only some of them so but the pay is only like five cents so per <laughs> per hour so Ooh, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah right and there's other jobs that just don't pay at all so you and you cannot refuse work you have to work if they assign you you have to go to school you have to go to work so there's no refusal whether you get paid or not that's you have to and uh, then the third way, obviously, uh, is illegal, illegal, you know, situations that other people have. So those okay. are the three ways that you can uh, generate money. Okay. And how much is money important in prison? It's very important. I, it's, I believe it's just, it's just as important in the free world. 
just in different aspects as far as you don't have to pay a bill to live. You don't have to pay a bill to watch TV, so on and so forth. But you need money to buy food because you don't want to eat the state provided food, which is nasty. So you need money for food. You need money for uh, hygiene products because they don't provide that. And you need money for clothes because if it gets cold, they don't provide you with stuff like that. In terms of prices, I'm just curious. Um, and sorry, this falls outside of your specific situation. It's just a very interesting yeah. background. Um, what are the prices in prison now that you've experienced the past prison? Is it a similar price in prison? Like the value <laughs> of $1 in the prison system is much higher than... Very much, very much higher. It's, I would say it's about 10 times. Everything in prison is inflated. I see. Okay. And for a lot of your time, um, were you able to be in a decent financial position while you were there? Yeah. So I was, I'm, I was actually blessed to have family and friends who, you know, continue to love and support me throughout my years of incarceration, including my wife, who's been a great uh, supporter of me. Uh, they sent me money every month and it allowed you know, my state to be as comfortable as, you know, so I didn't really have to worry too much about food and clothes because my family, including my wife, helped me out with that. And But there's a lot of people in prison who don't have that. So I'm, me, myself, I was, I was in a good position. Perfect. Without even realizing, Samari, you've created a perfect transition to now your lovely wife, yeah. Bina. A brief aparté to let you know about this week's sponsor, Aura, and let me speak from experience. Every week, news breaks about a new cyber attack or a potential data leaks. And that has led consumers to not really knowing how to protect themselves anymore. It puts them at risk of credit fraud and identity theft. And we've seen people on this show facing those issues. Aura, pretty much they offer you a, a monitoring services for your personal information. They will alert you quickly if they detect any form of threats or if your information has been compromised. They will also help you out to deal with some potential threats. Their services allows you to encrypt your Wi-Fi information, protecting your phone and your computer from malware. Aura is pretty much used by tens of thousands of people across the United States. They are the leader in the sectors. I use them myself. And so I encourage you to check out their services. I have a link in the description below. Thank you, Aura, for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to our content. So Pina, you are 36 years old. And uh, what is very surprising, guys, if you've paid attention, is that you guys started dating while you were in prison. Yes. So I am just intrigued a little bit here, Pina, for curiosity as to, you know, how, how, how do you date in prison? What's going on with that? Um, we actually met on Instagram. On Instagram in prison? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I had no idea he was um, incarcerated, um, but he was very honest and forthcoming about his situation. Um yeah, like when he messaged me, he was that was the first thing he said. Like, I don't know if you've noticed by my photos, which I didn't. <laughs> um, and he was like, you know, I'm incarcerated. This is what I'm here for. This is how long I'm here for. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, let me know. If, you know, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. Okay. And uh, if I may ask, uh, is it an environment that you've kind of lived in? Is it something that you were familiar with in the past? No, not at all. Um, I grew up in Utah, so I had no, um, and I, I, I had a very sheltered life, so I had no knowledge of what inside of prison looked like, you know? So when he messaged me and I'm looking at his profile, I'm like, it was kind of strange that you only took a photo in like a corner with some books, <laughs> but it, it, did, it didn't click, you know, because I I'd see. never seen the inside of a prison. Um, so, yeah, it was not something I was familiar with at all. I see. Okay. <clears throat> so um, an interesting first date, I would say. Uh, <laughs> you, so you were living at the time in Utah. You commuted to... California mm -hmm. uh, to meet him in person and I'm, I'm sure like Los Angeles is probably not the easiest prison to be in <clears throat> Brazil is probably one of the tough one there um, and, and you meet Samari how do you feel at the time kind of walk me through your emotions about potentially dating a person 
that you know still have years before you can actually be together. Yeah, it was um, a roller coaster of emotions. You could ask him, he knows. <laughs> One day I was like, yeah, I think I could do this. And then the next hour I was like, oh, I don't think I can do this. You know, so it was, um, and then meeting him for the first time was also very surreal because up until the point that I went to see him, um, you know, we had only talked on the phone. Um, so, and through letters, so it was... Oh, the letters? Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So there was a lot of writing and phone calls. And um, so, yeah, when I went to go see him, it was a completely different experience. Um, and, yeah, it was it was interesting. But, um, you know, eventually it just all worked out. Okay, awesome. And um, from what you mentioned as well, you guys got married. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys got married in prison yes how does this happen I, I didn't even know i mean <laughs> yeah. i apologize um but how did it happen yeah you have to go through like a whole background and you have to um you know consent that i know what he's in there for and how long he has um and that i'm not being forced to do it um things like that i had to get notaries and everything right uh, transpired and then we had the wedding it was during covid mm -hmm. oh yeah so it was that yeah. was kind of rough right there so there is like a ceremony with the ally and mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, yeah. And now, wow yeah there <laughs> were like five other couples with us so the pastor went around and like did our ceremony at these like little tables you know and yeah, so yeah. it was oh, like one of the a time. surreal experience yeah. <laughs> yeah and over that time pina you've been helping him financially as well mm -hmm. um but uh, let's reverse back a little bit as to the person that you are so you are originally from utah lived in a fairly sheltered environment up to the point at which you meet samari and move to california um and you currently are a massage therapist has it been kind of all of your life walk me through kind of how was your upbringing and and what brought you to be in the situation that you are today? Um, yeah, I'm the oldest of um, five kids. Um, growing up, it was uh, financially, it was rough. Uh, my parents are were um, teenage parents. At, at what age? Um, I want to say 15, 16. Okay. So um, they moved um, me out to Utah when uh, they had me. So, um, yeah, growing up, it was... It was a lot of, um, there was a lot of watching my siblings, you know, taking care of my siblings and um, helping my parents out. Okay. And over that time, how have you been able to manage your finances? It was rough. I didn't, I didn't grow up knowing much about money or how to spend my money, how to save it. I just knew that I had to make it, you know. Um, so I worked as much as I can all the time and um, gave and gave and gave and gave, you know, to everybody that needed it. Um, and then uh, once we met, I he helped me a lot with um, my finances as far as giving me advice um, with savings. Maybe I shouldn't blow all my savings on helping somebody out. Oh, so you would go through like building mm -hmm. wealth? Yeah. And then kind of yeah. <laughs> bringing up and down to the people that were asking you? Yeah. Yeah, so it was, it, and I think some of it is like a cultural thing too. You know, we we help our, our family, people that, that need help. If we have it, we'll give it. You know, I'll give you the shirt off my back if you need it. So that's kind of the mentality that I grew up in. Okay, very good. And so that brings you to kind of the situation that you're today, guys, as a couple, um, pretty much joining the finances as one unit, if I may say, okay? All right. Now that we know a little bit more about your guys' story, let's move on to the finance aspect of your situation, starting first with your income and your assets. Guys, a quick aparte to please invite you, if you like this type of content, to like and subscribe to our channel. This helps us tremendously. You work as a behavioral therapist. Congratulations for having this job um, following uh, incarceration. Um, how much do you make in this position? Uh, twenty four fifty an hour. Twenty four fifty an hour, and you're gonna be able to bring in about forty hours a week or so. Yes. Okay. How have you been able to present yourself, knowing the 
kind of difficult background that you had. And why I'm asking for that summary is because a lot of people are still kind of like, oh, I can't find a job. I can't, you know, I can't do this and so on. Well, I mean, with much respect, when you're carrying yourself 16 years of incarceration and you come in front of an employer, uh, they may look at you a little bit different. But somehow you've been able to pull it off and not only just uh, like this, you've been able to pull off in a position that pays decently good at uh, now that we calculated about 49,900 per year. How did you pull it off? I disclose, first and foremost, I always disclose that in all, in all my interviews to be upfront. And so the uh, interviewers said that it was fine and I still meet the qualifications and that, and as long as that it's not crimes against children, which I don't have, uh, they were going to proceed with the hiring. So I actually proceeded with the hiring, but then I guess their supervisor got the uh, report, got my uh, report from somebody else, and they flagged me. And eventually, uh, they they were basically saying that they're going to fire me unless I present some form, or basically I have to. Sp- Speak about my side, so which uh, in which I did, and so I contacted the person and I, I I wrote out a letter explaining everything you know my life prior to and then who I am today, and just asking them to not judge me on then just to judge me on my actions now, and then also I just want to speak with them so they can you know feel me and hear me and understand that. You know, that's not who I am because, you know, you read stuff on paper, you see stuff, you could tend to just judge on it. But when you get to know me, you can see that that's that was a totally different life, that I was I was a child with a mentality that's no longer with me anymore. So but it worked out well. And now I'm in the field. So. Well done. OK, check mark on you. Congratulations. And I applaud you for actually going into this vocation, working with kids, I believe, that are facing kind of um, mental difficulties such as autism, autism. and other behavioral uh, uh, aspects. OK, very nice. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Samari. Let's uh, look at you, uh, Pina, here, looking at your application. Uh, I believe you recorded about, uh, so you are self-employed, right? You work for your own. Um, <clears throat> and you reported about $42,000 of income per year. Does that seem accurate for you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, if we look guys as a couple together, you bring per year 91920 together that will bring your net income assuming taxation in the state of california around 5592 does that seem fair mm-hmm. yes. yes okay now let's move on to what you guys have uh, as a couple again and i will combine you guys as one uh, unit since you share accounts uh, we're gonna start slow but you know uh, they found themselves in a fairly decent spot uh, with a checking account here with a balance of about $24, but that's only one. Let's move on to some of your savings. We also see that you have a first saving at 370. I believe this is yours summary. You uh, have as well another saving account with $3,000, another one with 3,334 and another one with $2,512. Okay. Do you have any other form of assets, such as investments? Uh, No. No? Uh, Anything retirement related? No. No? Anything related to, let's say, uh, like a house or any of that? No. No? But you have a car? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, But I believe you do own money on that car, right? Okay. What do you drive? Uh, 2017 Hyundai Elantra. 2017 Hyundai Elantra. How many miles? A uh, hundred thousand. Okay. So the car value right now, if we were to sell it, is at around 8,500. Okay. It okay. seems to me from your application that you're underwater because your debt on that car is higher. However, we'll account for this in your assets. Okay. As a couple, do you guys have anything else? No. no. Any lump sum of money that you could be expecting from a parent or anyone? No. 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 Okay. So together at uh, 30 and 36 years old, that brings your total amount of assets, everything that you own at 17,738. Okay. Okay. All right. Now that we understand what you guys have, let's look at your expenses and your debt. So we're going to start first with a regular expense. How much do you guys pay for rent per month? 
400. 400? How do you guys pull it off at $400 uh, <laughs> in, uh, in in Los Angeles? Uh, give me the uh, juice. Yeah, we, we live with uh, my sister, and so she's uh, giving us that grace. Okay, so you're living with your sister at $400 in LA. How long can you live in that situation for? I say about a about a year. About a year or so. Okay, but the goal at some point is going to, for you yeah. to guys have your own space. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, very well. Um, any other form of kind of housing related or location based expense? Um, my uh, office that I rent out of to okay. do my massages. Okay, and that's about about five hundred a month. So I'm going to add. Uh, Okay, I will put it as a ha- as part of your housing expense right now. So the 400 plus the 500 that you use for your business at $900 per month. That is, when we look at you together, 16% of your income. Guys, this is very, very good. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, you guys probably knew about that. $400 in LA. Uh, that's <laughs> a pretty good deal, right? Uh, we like it to be below 28. So you guys are good to go. And I like the fact that you're spending also that money for your business. Uh, that seems fair. Let's move on to some of the rest of your expenses. Here I see on your phone, you guys are spending around $200. Okay, that is pretty fair. Uh, Let's look at your car (coughs) transportation expense. Okay, so, uh, and that's going to be our first debt. Um, You have about $11,365 of debt. Now, what I like to see is your interest rate is at 3.9%. It's not too bad. Actually, you scored pretty good on that front. That brings your monthly payment at 365. How much do you guys spend on gas per month? About 250 to 300. 250, okay. And in terms of insurance, where are we at? Uh, 200. 200, okay. Um, so that brings your transportation expense against your income at 15%. We like it to be at... 15%. Okay. So on paper, together, you guys are golden, okay? I like to see that. Um, however, if we look at the value of your car, given that your car is worth 8500 and you own 11400 you're underwater about $2,900. You know, if you were to sell your car today, you would have to spend money on it. Look, it's a, it's a pretty good brand, Um for now, let's think about this in our recommendation section. As I look into some of the rest of your expenses, guys, and this is where it starts to become a little bit challenging, I see that you guys have accumulated a mix of uh, personal loans, line of credits, credit cards, uh, for some of the spends that can be a little bit questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's start first with your personal credit card here. I see a balance of 5,427 at an interest rate of uh, 17.9%. This is actually pretty surprising for a credit card. They are uh, pretty nice, a minimum payment of 136. And I see that you haven't really been, been paying that credit card down in the recent months. <laughs> <coughs> In fact, I see a couple of transactions that uh, maybe it's not the most preferable that we would like to see. Uh, You guys definitely like to go out quite a bit, (laughs) no? And a little bit of fast food here and there, uh, you know, Olive Gardens, Check in the Box, Del Taco, Jimmy John's. (laughs) Uh, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I see also somehow there's been an expense, and I don't know, I believe this might be you, summary of Lime Scooters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, we calculated almost like $100 <laughs> in one day. How do you spend $100 on, on limes, <laughs> like in one day, guys? Come on. Oh, because it was uh, three of us, and so we were at the LA, LA Marathon. LA Marathon, yeah. Oh. And then, so basically we were there I all day. I kept dying, too. Yeah, and so we had to, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I also, yeah, I mean, quite a bit of... Restaurants, you know, every other day or so. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to have to think about how we think about this behavior. Mm. Um, I know probably, you know, there were some festivities with, you know, with you coming out and so on. Uh, I can understand that. But uh, now it's been, uh, you know, a couple of months. We need to think <laughs> about this uh, coming children, guys. Let's... Yes. Uh, you know, let's think about all of this. Uh, yeah, it's it's hundreds of dollars uh, per month that are spent on on what I call the kind of um, shit counter. You know, and that's probably why you guys are not saving much money right now. In fact, as uh, we look into some of your statements, you guys have net worth has decreased over the past couple of months. Okay, we want to. Uh, 
bring back that curve back up as we think about some of the rest of your debt again we have a personal line of credit of 4262 uh, at an interest rate of 11.7 percent again the interest rates that you have are not too bad for the nature of the loans that you've taken mm -hmm. but uh, walk me through kind of what has been going on with picking up debt like this what's happening um i want to say that one was for, I want to say that one was pay, to pay off a credit card. Oh, I that see. Had, so you've I think had it was like a 27% interest rate. Okay. Um, and then the other credit card, the $5,000 balance one, that was balance transferred from two other credit cards to that one because those interest rates were also 27%. Okay. Uh, if I may ask you today, Pina, where do you find yourself uh, credit score-wise? Uh, about 7.05. Wow. Okay. So you've been maintaining minimum payments on the... You've never failed on payment, most probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're being a little bit drilled with interest. We'll be speaking about this together. In terms of uh, credit score, I'm glad that you've been able to protect it. Okay. I see another a type of uh, loan that is a, a little bit atypical, a line of credit, mm -hmm. um, 311, 18%. Uh, what is that? Um, that one, my credit union gave it to me like overdraft protection oh, kind of thing. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> So you've been going on yeah. under, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if this shows a balance, you've had your account going down. I mean, you know, I think you're playing on fine waters. Uh, I think it's because you only have $25 on your checking. So if an expense hit, yeah. right away you've been hit with overdraft and journey overdraft around $35. Yeah. So we have to think about how we manage the, because your, your, your money is, is in a bunch of savings. You have like four different savings, yeah. but you have no money on the core one. Yeah. So eh, here is about 300 bucks that went through to the garbage that we could have prevented because you have a little bit of money on the side. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry. I forgot to ask you, Pina, do you have any other form of student loans? Oh, uh, yes. I do have about 15,000 in student loans. Is it with the federal government? Yes. Okay. And when are you going to have to pay those? Uh, this month. Oh, okay. And how much is this going to be? It's about 280. Okay. Month. Okay. Okay. So you have, if I make some calculation, about five years of student loans to pay. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad to see summary is yourself. I mean, you know, some of them were incurred uh, by you, uh, Pina. You're showing up today with zero dollars of debt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, that is a positive, <laughs> you know, better situation than many, you would think. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this question summary. So you rated your couple as I'm okay, but I just, and you guys were probably aware of that, recognize the fact that you've been losing net worth over the past couple months. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I, I don't feel good. Um, like I said, my mindset, I'm more of a, a positive person. I always believe that we can do worse. But now with uh, with me beginning this job, we should be able to start back. Oh, so right now all of this was with you not contributing money? Yeah, I haven't been able to contribute because of me going through the, uh, the ropes with the background check and stuff. So I've barely got approved. And now I will begin to contribute. Okay. Whew, what a piece of fresh air. Okay. That makes me a little bit more happy. So we've been relying on only your income. Uh, now it makes a little bit more sense. Whew, okay. All right. We are back. Okay. That's, that's good. So your income was not being accounted for. So that's going to definitely help kind of push the couple a little bit more towards the right direction. Yes. Okay. So that brings me to my next segment which looks at the money case. This case, guys, is going to come as an intervention to your financial situation, is especially as we think about your position of new upcoming parents. There's going to be a two-parter in this money case, which makes it even more exciting. Over the course of time, uh, Pina, and now also Samari, since you guys are together as a couple, you've accumulated quite a bit of debt. In fact, $36,365 of debt, okay? And all of that debt comes with an interest. 
if we were to sum the amount of money that you're spending of interest per year, it is not a thousand dollars. It is not a thousand five hundred dollars, but it is a thousand nine hundred and eighty-two dollars. Okay, so this money here, guys, I want you to understand. The thousand at the top is the amount of money that today, if you do not act on your debt, you will have to spend purely in interest per year. Okay. And we want to get out of this mentality. And I'm going to tell you why, and you will see it's going to come to you as a surprise. Let's think together as what's going to be now for your life, the most important thing, your upcoming children. When we think about saving for children as a couple, there are different school of thoughts, okay? Uh, some individuals say they want to apply what is called as the one-third rule, meaning that by the time the kid goes to college, uh, you as parents should be able to provide up to one-third of the tuition expense for your children. But I don't think you guys will really follow it because it's not concrete. There is another rule that is called the $2,000 per year rule. You're paying 1982 of interest. Mm -hmm. If instead of paying that interest, we were for you guys to invest per month $170, okay? which is what you're paying today of interest, mm -hmm. for the next 18 years, okay? by the time your kid will be 18 years old, you will have on his account, $103,000. $103,000 for your children by taking action to the end, simply putting $170 per month. Now you're going to tell me, wait, Roman, hold on. Um, my kid is, might not go to college. What's going to happen? Well, there are processes in place for you to convert that 529 into a Roth IRA, which is a retirement account for your kid. Okay, and by doing this, look at this, like it's crazy. Just by putting $170,000, you've almost already set your kid for retirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. So, so I really want for you guys to think differently as to how you approach things. Because when we think about some of the expense here that I see, hundreds of dollars spent on the side, those hundreds of dollars here are thousands, if not tens of thousands that your kid will need at some point in his life, mm -hmm. okay? So that brings me now together to our next section, which looks at your recommendations. This is what I would do today if I was in your shoes, both as a couple, okay? Thinking as one unit, as I mentioned previously. Well, first, we're going to need to understand how much are your needs. This is money that you need today to survive if something was to happen, okay? And that accounts for running your business, that accounts for the $400 of rent, that accounts for the minimum payments that you own on all of your debt, including your student loans, including basic groceries. We are not, guys, at all. I'm including your gym membership for you too, though. But I'm not accounting at all for any of the, you know, shit expenses here that I've mentioned previously, okay? Living kind of good, but not crazy, okay? Together, guys, your current monthly needs sum to 3130 This is money that no matter what you guys need to pull. But guys, that is accounting the fact that you're staying at your sister that spends $400 per month. Okay? And we don't know for how long this is going to last. Mm. Number two, in terms of wants, you guys are a young couple. You just came out from, you know, a, a pretty surreal lifestyle. I still want for you guys to experience life but I want you to experience life in a way that is being controlled and budgeted because you're going to have to tighten the belts if you want to enhance your situation. I don't want you guys cornered in six months when the kid come and it's going to cost you a fortune because right now, eh, you know, you guys are just the both of you, pretty young, no problem. A kid comes, you're going to have a bunch of expenses that are going to hit and if we're not getting prepared today, I'm scared for what's going to happen. And I want you to drown and then come back here like many other people have come with tens of thousands of dollars of bad debt. Uh, you know, it's a vicious circle. So we need to get yourself out of that as soon as possible. So I am budgeting for you $200 per month. That is it. $200 a month to go around, have a little bit of weekly dates, 
if you want to use the scooters around, I don't care. If you want to do a little bit of Del Taco or, you know, all of the, the, the fast food options, and I've seen some other ones that are a little bit Olive Garden and so on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jokes apart, I feel like $200, $50 a week is very reasonable and still allows you to have fun as a couple. Yeah, I agree. So where does that leave us? That leaves us with the number that I want you guys to register. This is probably the most important number in our discussion today. You guys should be able to save. Mathematically, it makes sense, assuming that you guys are bringing the income that we've discussed. 2,262 per month. Now, it may seem like a lot. It may seem like a lot. However, you have to account for the fact that now, summary is going to bring a pretty good income into the equation, right? Mm. 2,200. Now, what would I do with this money? Well, I have a very good news for you. If we were to target a debt-free environment by the time the child comes, excluding your student loans, it would take you six months to be debt-free. Okay? And that is assuming the fact that you're not touching the current money that you have saved up. When we think about liquid money that you have right now, if you were to sell everything, it's about $9,300, okay? So how I'm thinking about it is I need you guys to start as a couple targeting debt rapidly, rapidly. Because right now, I'm, you know, you're 36 years old, you're not in your 20s anymore, and you guys haven't even tackled anything related to retirement and so on. Here is how I'm thinking about it. In one of your application, you mentioned here, one of your goals is to get out of the housing situation that you're in today pretty fast. Well, I can tell you right away that mathematically you have absolutely no benefit right now. You cannot afford to move out of your sister place at the price that it is right now. So if you're telling me that you can last one year, I would encourage you, and I know this is difficult for you, Pina, you want to go out and you, know, you can't afford this position right mm -hmm. now. It, it would be uh, a financial disaster. So I would make sure for the time being, until you guys are able to build yourself as a couple, to maintain this position. And if, you know, you can help around the house, like showcase, because at $400 in Los Angeles, it's not bad at all, okay? Mm -hmm. On top of that, I want to ask just as a, as a brief aparté, Personally, I know that you guys may have an attachment to Los Angeles, but there are um, places that uh, in the United States are much more affordable. <clears throat> okay, Las Vegas, which is not too far from LA as we think about your family, it's about 40% cheaper to live here. So that could be something to put into question. However, this is not right away. I want you to get the experience and the resume on your position that you've been able to accomplish this job successfully. We need for you, Samari, to engage into society. Okay, And in fact, what I was also pleased to see in some of your statements is that you are paying for a credit builder. You guys are paying for a credit builder card um, that I really like. Actually, it's, it's self. It's a, it's a pretty good one, not sponsored. Uh, and that pleases me because, again, you're entering society in the right way. And hopefully you're playing the game right by not maxing this card, going into debt and so on. I doubt that you will engage into this. But so far, it's being pretty good. Another option that could be interesting for you, especially Samari as a young credit builder, is to participate into a program that's called Stellar Fi, and that allows you to pay regular bills like your prime and so on, and that gets reported to the bureau. So you're reporting multiple payments per month. There is a little bit of a subscription. I have a link in the description. I've used their service. I like it. But again, we want you to get proof that Samari can handle monthly debt, monthly payment. It creates history on your account, and that is positive for you, so something to consider. So what would I do with the $9,000 that you have right now? Well, I'm going to challenge you. I want for you to pay the $5,500 credit card that has an 18% interest right away with this money. And why am I being kind of annoying to deplete your savings for it? It's because I wanted to fire, fire something in you. Because you're going to take a quick step as taking out of that debt. Summary, you're going to realize as well that eh, right now, guys, we only have like three to four thousand dollars in front of us. And I think it's going to push you towards targeting something. On top of that, you're going to save a tremendous amount of interest on this card right now per year. It's about five hundred dollars that you're spending on interest. And it's going to hopefully give you a first early win to your debt repayment journey. 
from that aspect, I want you to start targeting, of course, the line of credit at $300 that's out of the way. Please, of course, move some of the money from your saving into your checking. All of this, I will write it in at the end so you guys have a full plan. But let's get out that first credit card debt. And guys, but no joke, huh? um, the interest that you have on your credit card right now is not too bad, but this is probably consolidated. So you've paid at some point a pretty stiff price. What is today showing at 4,200 was probably at some point, maybe two to $3,000 because you've accumulated so much interest. So when we think about the personal finance game in the United States, Credit card is one of the worst type of debt that exists. And if you partake in this, you're no matter what going to kill yourself financially. There is no investments other than very risky in the United States that, ha that provides you with return higher than what a credit card debt is. So when we think about, oh, you know, I want to invest into a company or I want to invest into the stock market or in crypto and people take credit card debt for that, it's a, they are shooting yourself not in the feet but in the leg at this point because it's terrible. So please do not partake in any ideas. As you think about saving that $2,200 goal, it's going to be very rapidly around putting a little bit of money on the side. I want you guys to target $10,000 of savings by the time the baby comes. Okay? That is mathematically achievable. $10,000 of saving by the time the baby comes, plus you would have paid your $5,500 of credit card debt, and you would have largely impacted your other credit card. If we can target, and that's, that's I'm pushing the envelope a little bit here, but you guys have it in you, especially you, Samari, I'm, I'm looking at you, because you're going to have, you know, you've defined yourself, uh, Pina, as, as the warrior. Um, you're going to go through an interesting event in the coming months. So summary, and I, I, I have full confidence that you could pull this off, but you know, you're going to have to kind of bring it together. And, and if we can, that's, that's pushing. I know, but I want to project something that's achievable. It's a little bit, you know, it's, it, it, there needs to be a little bit more than the income that you're making, but not drastically more $10,000 of savings and no more credit card debt. I'm okay for you to maintain your car. Do not touch this car right now. 3.9% or 4% or so is very good. The car is, rel is, is reliable. I know you've put in one of your goals that you want to change car. No, absolutely not in question right now. Financially, it would be a disaster. Um, please maintain your regular payments on your student loans. Your credit score is really well protected. I love to see that. Maybe, guys, in a couple of years, three, four years, the family is built, you have a new child, you're thinking about buying a house, you would have a good credit, you would have a brand new credit, which is fine. Together, you can pull a decent rate, okay? So please do not miss on any minimum payments. The other thing is, um, as a married couple, you guys are going to have now tax incentives on your income. So married is going to benefit greatly. You're also going to be able to benefit from child tax credit, you know, it's a couple thousand dollars uh, from, and it's two brackets. It's from zero to six years old and from six to 17. And that goes directly against your um, tax payment. And it's a couple thousand dollars per year, okay? Uh, some people use this tax credit right away to put it into a 529. But on your side, I want to start instigating the mindset around saving and not putting, uh, you know, money on five saving account and then pulling every month against it, okay? You need to set yourself for retirement. You need to set yourself as well for retirement. And how we do that is through what is called a Roth IRA, okay? Roth IRA is the way to go. Start small. I want you guys to open your Roth IRA this month and you put each month $50. I don't care. It's not going to make a crazy impact, but it's going to be the behavior that's going to kick in together. Think about this, in six months, crazy. $10,000 saved for the child so that you can you know, come up with expenses that are gonna incur. I promise you it's gonna happen no matter what. Credit card debt free. Now you're working off 5% student loans, okay. 4% car, okay. Golden. Mm -hmm. You guys have started to set yourself for retirement. You guys have started to consider when the child is born, something saved for him. Look at this. 
in a matter of a couple months, you can completely alternate the situation that you find yourself in. However, it all comes to this question. If you guys maintain the spending behavior that happened in the past couple months, you are done. $200. Maintain your needs. And I have, I have kept some like personal things, you know, like the gym, a, personal, a little bit of personal care and so on. $200 is the limit. And then like everything is going to fall into order. You will be up the credit score. You would have savings. You would have investments. You would have retirements. You would have funds for your kids. Boom. The game is done. From that point, you call me back in six months when the kid is here. And then we speak about strategy as an investment, as diversifying your investment so that the, the kid is in a good position, you guys are in a good position. But right now I need for you to satisfy the basics. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah it does sound good. Yeah, I'm, I'm open for that. Open and uh, excited for the future, especially if we uh, take those steps. Yeah. I think it's, does it seem fair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it seem achievable? Yes. Yeah, very much so. Okay. You're set. You guys are good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cool. Um, any final words, potentially, not just about you, but to the audience that may find themselves maybe in, in a similar situation as you, maybe not with your background, but, you know, a young couple that's about to get their children and that's kind of a lost a little bit sometimes. What do you want to share? I think my final words about that, uh, similar couples and similar situations would be to communicate, have faith in your partner and continue to progress and seek out steps in order for you to progress. Perfect. What about you, uh, Pina? Um, I would say don't be afraid. <laughs> I was telling him that I was like, I don't know if I want to do this because uh, the stigma around financials and money, I, you know, I, I grew up to not really talk about it. You know, you just do and then like try to figure it out as best as you can. But I'm actually really grateful for this opportunity and to be here and to learn that, you know, what we're spending is not healthy and that it can be turned around. Um, so I'm super grateful. Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. The professionals that know what they're doing. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I will be contacting you in about a month and you should have paid the 5,500. I mean, this is no real effort. You please uh, pay now, but most importantly, hopefully your job starts. Good job. And you guys have $2,000 that um, is kind of saved up and you've accomplished that and really restrict your spend to $200. Do you guys shake my hand? Yes. All right. <laughs> One and for you two. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see the follow-up. Great hopes for this young family, for this amazing turnaround. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really thankful for the person that you've become too, man. I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Um, and, you know, for you also going through all this movement. Guys, it was a pleasure uh, having this, this couple on the show. We hope you enjoyed this story. Until then, we we'll see you next time. A bientôt. Hi, Romain. This is Maureen Pina here. Here's a brief update since the last time we were on the show. We were unable to knock off the credit card debt like how you wanted us to. But since the start of my new job, which has been going great, we've been knocking off smaller chunks at a faster pace as far as the other steps. We're slowly taking those as well and keeping our expenses at a minimum. So thank you for that because it's allowing us to actually change our trajectory. As the pregnancy goes, we spoke about it last time, it's been going great. She's six months along and we're still due for a healthy baby girl in October. So we're blessed and we're thankful and hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you.